All right. So in this uh, in this example, this is the first example from section three point four. Even though we're in a different section, there's a lot of similarities to what we uh, what we did in the last uh, in the last problem. It, for example, four from section three point three. There's a lot of similarities. The only real difference, um, well, we're introduced to the linear uh, the linear factor theorem, which um, isn't isn't too bad. It just tells you we look at the, at the degree of the polynomial. And um, like, for example, for P of X, we have a degree four polynomial. So that tells you that we will have uh, exactly four linear, linear factors. Um, I'll, I'll explain that in a second, a little more detail. But um, the, uh, the uh, main difference that we're seeing here is that we're going to be looking at the imaginary factors. We did not deal with that in section 3.3. So the, but the process is almost identical to what we did in the last video. So I'm going to skip um, up to where we find all of our rational zeros, because which you can do using the rational zero theorem. So uh, I would encourage you to do that, but I'm going to jump directly to that result. So um, you'll notice, and, and I'm only going to work out part A. You can do part B on your own. So for part A, we have the following rational zeros. So P over Q, we have plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus eight, plus and plus or minus 16. So these are the possibilities. And, um, and similar to the last video, um, and, and in the example in the textbook for this, uh, they jump directly to, oh, let's just check this. And um, so what we'll notice is that, um, yeah, they, they say, oh, let's just check out two. And, um, and you may not know exactly which one to choose. So what, what you need to do, and I would suggest to do, is use the rational theorem, um, uh, the, or the remainder theorem from section 3.1, and plug in values into your function. And I'm going to do that. And um, I still have the results from before, from the last video. Let's go ahead and delete these. So I'm gonna enter in a new function so we still have the function p of x, but in this case we have x to the fourth minus 4x to the third uh, plus 8x squared minus 16x and plus 16. Okay, so I've entered our new function in here and I'm going to evaluate at the possible p over q's. And so we're going to look at p of negative one first and as you can see here we have 45 um, that's no good so I'm, I'm, I'm going to just backtrack and just find the ones that work so negative one does not work p of one gives us five that does not work and then we move on to the next one negative two that gives us 128 does not work p of two oh that gives us zero so p of two equals zero so this is just uh, a you know means uh, going through a faster process or you know going through the same process but just in a faster way uh, compared to what I did in the va last video in evaluating them. I'm just going a little faster since you already know the process. And let's look at some other ones. Um, so p of negative eight that doesn't work as you can see already. I don't even have to put the parentheses. And then 8 does not work. Negative 16, nope. And 16, no. All right, so we actually have all the rational zeros. That's interesting. Okay, very good. And um, so we'll, what we'll notice is it's possible. In, in, the last, um, in the last problem from the last video, uh, we noticed that we had four distinct um, rational zeros in the end and we had a degree four polynomial. So the multiplicity for each of those could only be one because if we had more than one multiplicity, then the degree, it would go beyond the degree. And, and we know that there's only up to the degree of number of zeros. So here, 
um, we only have one result. We only have one, which is p of 2 equals 0. And the thing is, is that um, it's possible, since we only have one, even out of the negative and positive, we only have one in the end. So we, um, and, and I bet if we, if we did the, um, if we, if we did Descartes' rule of signs, we would actually determine that, that there would have to be, actually, let's do that really quickly. Let's, let's do Descartes' rule of signs, because you really should be doing this, and they didn't really talk about this. So notice that P, so if you looked at P of X, that's equal to, actually, just, I'm going to look at the function right here. Notice that there's one sign change. There's two sign changes. There's th three sign changes. And then there's four sign changes. So there's, um, for the, po the, the positive um, zeros, there's either zero, two, or four positive real zeros. And we just got one. We, we found that there's only one. So there must be another one. And so what that's telling us is that the multiplicity must be even. It must, you know, the, uh, the multiplicity must be two or four. Um, you may want to review the multiplicity video at the, at the first video that I, I went over uh, to understand what I'm talking about. But the multiplicity must be even, meaning the exponent for this must be even. So what we need to do is we need, so what we need to do is divide by negative two, or sorry, not negative two, positive two, using um, using synthetic division. So we'll do that. One, negative four, eight, negative 16, and 16. And we'll divide really quickly. And we have one, two is negative two, two times negative two is negative four, Add down, we get 4, 8, negative 8, negative 16, and that gives us 0. And as we would expect, the same result, the remainder is 0. Uh, so this gives us x to the third minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8 for our result. So what we'll notice is that 2 is the only possibility. So we need to divide by 2 again because we need either 0, 2, or 4 positive real zeros. So it must, we know it's not 0 because we already found 1. So it must be 2 or 4. And since 2 is the only possibility, then we need to divide by that again and see if, if, it go, if we get 0. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, we, we could actually plug this into uh, Desmos, this function right here, and plug in 2 to it and see if we get 0. But let's just use synthetic division. Uh, so we have 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 8. So we were dividing it by our result by 2, and we get 1. 2 times 1 is 2, which gives us 0. 2 times 0 is 0, 4, 8, 0. Yes, as we expected, we got 0 out. So uh, this will result in x uh, squared and then plus 0x and then plus 4. So there's no x term since we have a 0 here. So what we found is that p of x, now what we found so far is p of x is equal to um, x minus 2 times x minus 2. We just factored two terms out. So this is x minus 2 squared since we factored two of them out. And then our result, and then we, we can multiply that by x squared plus four. And then now we want to factor this further, and we'll notice uh, that when we factor this further, that um, we're going to end up with some imaginary, um, imaginary terms here. Uh, so look at this. Uh, we'll factor x squared plus four. And if we set this equal to zero, um, then we can solve for x. We don't actually need synthetic division here. 
and we're setting it equal to zero because we're trying to find the zeros. Remember, the zeros are where the function's equal to zero. We didn't pick that up. And then notice that we need to take the square root, and we get x equals plus or minus the square root of uh, negative 4, which is x equals plus or minus 2i. So this tells us that this factors to, um, so we have x minus 2 squared x plus 2i, x minus 2i. All right, so there we go. Um, we have the following factorization. Um, and from this, we can find all the zeros. So what, what we've done is we, we, uh, we wrote the, uh, each function as a product of its leading coefficient and linear factors. So um, that's that the function written in, um, in, in, a, in, a, in a product of its linear factors. But then we also want to write down the zeros, which the, the, um, the zeros, I'll write that down here, the zeros, 2, which we found right here, has a multiplicity of 2, but um, we end up getting the result uh, 2. We can, it, we, we, we would actually write it, uh, uh, twice, okay, since it occurred twice. Um, or you can say zeros, it's 2 with multiplicity 2. And then we also have negative 2i and 2i. So there we go. This is the function written in its factored form. And this is the list of all the zeros of our function. All right, let me know if you have any concerns about this. Um, it, it, it is a process, but once you get the hang of section 3.3, there's not much else we're learning here from section 3.4. It's just introducing imaginary numbers and um, combining you know, Descartes' rule of signs and the rational zero theorem. And once you get a hang of, of, of those, then it's not too bad. Uh, you just have to combine all those concepts to you end up getting this sort of, uh, of work um, done for a problem like this. So let me know if you have any concerns. I'll be more than happy to help.